hopefully you can all hear me okay. I'm Natalie and I'm going to be taking you through a little bit of a watercolour project today. So don't be afraid to say hi and let us know that you're watching. We should be live on Facebook, YouTube and Twitch today. So let's see how it goes. So today I'm going to be working with some foil coil USBs. Now I've popped up a link for something that closely matches the first file that I'm going to be using. So if you haven't got these, don't panic. There are alternatives out there that I've I've linked for you. So good morning, Linda. So in terms of the chat, I can now see everybody's chat from everywhere without you having to go to restream. So fingers crossed. It'll all work fine. <laughs> Hi Deb. Hi Tracy. Hi Thea. Ooh, now isn't it a warm one today? So I don't know how long I'll be streaming for because it's quite warm in here. So I'm going to get started with the Kelly Create USB. So the three I have pulled out in case you want to craft along with me is Kelly Creates, Heidi Swap, and the Paige Evans USB. But I'm going to focus on this one first. And what I want to do is I'm going to work with some leaves. So if I open this up, we can see that you have a little bit of a preview inside. And the file I want to use is this little tiny leaf one just in there. So you'll be pleased to know it's going to come up a lot bigger when we put that onto our scanning cup. So, good morning, Valerie. So with my scanning cut, I always use a USB extension lead. It saves the port on your machine. If it goes wrong at any point, it's just five pounds to just replace your cable rather than worrying how to pay 500 to replace your whole machine. Yes, Louise, I can see you. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna pop that into my extension lead. Wake up the scanning cut. I'm going to go to retrieve data. Now I haven't pinched Jean's camera today, so please bear with me. I will try and move the camera in a bit when we start to get into the foiling. And I've even given myself a little guide as to where I need to go. So we're going to be working with the SVG files. So you have both SVG and PNG formats on these USBs. And I'm going to go to the leaves folder. And then there's a file called leaves. And that's the one we're going to be using today. So I'm going to go OK. And that's going to put it onto my mat. Now, I'm going to be working with some watercolour paper today. So, I'm going to pop my spare sheet just off to one side. This is all media paper by Paper Mill Direct. So this is going to take whatever we throw at it. And the reason I've done that is I'm thinking I might spray, I might use some watercolour. So I have everything ready to go if I need it. <laughs> no, you're not haunting me today. <laughs> okay. So. Cutting mat. I use an artist sticks. And I'm going to pop my card on the inch mark for this one and that's because I want my foil to go right up to this edge here now I'm just thinking I could have done with picking up my foil quill pieces so let me just do that quickly and I'm just going to use these just to mask off the edges of my mat And that's going to prevent any foil getting onto my sticky. So did you all have a good long weekend? Yeah, 
Ian was working so I made the most of yesterday and did a load of book writing. And I need something a bit shorter so it's a lot promising. There we go. So I'm just going to fill in that gap there. It doesn't matter if they overlap slightly. So I have some white foil that I have waiting. Is that still for sale now? Yes, the foil shield is still for sale. Um, we are working on an updated version of it at the moment so that you'll be able to just have the pieces arrive and you can then put it together and have fun. Okay. have my foil shield in place but I haven't applied my foil now the reason that I'm going to do that is I want to do a background scan first then position what I actually want to draw and then I'll be popping the foil over the top uh, playing with the gold foil I got sent seeing what does and doesn't work well we had a little bit of a surprise with what worked last week so we were working with some of the silver one, I think. Oh, okay. yeah. Um, yeah, I think it was the silver one. And we were doing the lamination technique with a laser printer. <laughs> and that actually worked with our foil, which in theory it shouldn't, because it, what we should have ended up with was a whole sheet of foil. But that didn't happen. We got a nice outline instead. Which was interesting. So obviously our, our laminator is a bit gentler on the heat side to the foil quill. Okay. So let's just tuck the rest of these pieces away so I'll have room to manoeuvre. And I'm going to do a background scan. Yep, so you just need a laser printer and a laminator and some foil for that one. I'm going to bring, oh, I didn't want to just remove one bit, hang on, let's go to edit. Just going to undo that. I'm going to select all because it's not grouped. Let's group it. Move it down. Now I want it to more or less, if I show you on here, fill this kind of area here. So at the moment it's about this big. But because it's vectors, it doesn't matter about actually enlarging and stretching. We're not going to lose any quality doing that. So I'm going to go to resize and then there we go. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So when we're resizing, we always want to bring it into the centre of our map because it resizes from the centre outwards. I can make it bigger. OK. And I'm also going to rotate it round so that it's up the other way. It just looks a bit better that way up, I think. So I'm move that there. Now, because we can't see the bottom edge of our card at the moment, let's darken down that scan. So there's our bottom edge just there. And bring that down. 
So we could actually make that a little bit bigger. Okay, okay again, okay again, and I'm going to set it to draw because I'm using the four quill. We can just use draw if you're using a quickie glue pen or the brother foiling pen. Just make sure that you use the foil and glue pen setting. Okay, so it's going to turn blue, which means that it knows it's going to draw. Uh, yes, and I would do it. If you wanted to create some um, foil paper, you could use an iron and do it that way. Just do put a, a bit of baking parchment or scrap paper over the top, just so that you're not putting it into direct contact with your iron. And just gives you a bit of protection that way. Okay. So foil quills. There are three for our electronic plotters. You have a fine, a standard and a bold. Now what I would say is if you are a beginner and you're on a budget, if you can only buy one, then go for the bold. I was very lucky that you know we, we did the uh, starter packs when they first came out. So I do have all three. But you don't need to have all three if you don't want to. So just to show you the difference. Let's get these in order. So you have the bold. Which has a really wide flat tip. You have the standard which is finer but still has a rounded tip. And then you have the fine. Which if I can get it to focus is tiny. So the one that you need the most skill for is the fine, definitely. Now, what I would recommend doing for this particular technique is using the bold one. So that you've got a nice strong line. I always power mine with a separate USB power supply. So in this case I'm using the real memory keepers one and yes I'm using Carl's four quill adapter on that one because I managed to get my other one stuck on my standard <laughs> So, with the foil quill, you always want to give it a good time to preheat, ideally not in your machine. So, it does come with a little heat protector spatula, but what I would say is I found that that is actually prone to tipping, which if anything means that your heat is more likely to disperse to your mat than if it's just in the machine. using is the white one. Now I do have it as a 12x12 sheet but I actually don't need that much. So I'm going to give it a little trim. Let's tidy up the bottom edge too. You're going to lie your foil over your card. Now I've done it so that it extends beyond the edge so that when I do my tape it's going to have a clear area for where that card is. I'm just going to tape that onto there. The other benefit of using the 4x12 
spoils you is that you have a paper surface to tape onto. Now you want to try and get your foil to lie as flat as possible. Now we do have the foil shield mat and what I would say is for the DX range it's okay in small doses. <laughs> for the CM range it's um, probably better to just just use this method. I'm going to show you some other things that you can be doing with your foil foil mat though because we're going to have a bit of a foiling week this week. So make sure that your tape is all pressed down well because the last thing you want is anything lifting in your machine. If you are having problems with tape lifting then don't be afraid to use something different over the top. That's why we have the foil shield. <laughs> so that if you do need to just tack anything down, do it to the shield rather than to your mat. And that way you're not going to be pulling up adhesive. So, there's one bit here that's just misbehaving. Let's just stick that down with a bit of what Amazon calls low tack tape. It's not that low tack to be honest. I'm just cutting a few little strips just to solve those problem areas. Very, 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 very warm today. Yesterday it wasn't anywhere near as warm as this in here. It's quite overcast most of the day. Okay. So, while we've been doing that, our full quill's been getting nice and warm. Now you have two little lines on your foil quill adapter if you're using Carl's one. These go to the back so I'm just going to lower that in and then just lower your lever. If there's any resistance just give it a little wiggle and try again. Don't try and force it. Whew. And off we pop. Just going to give that one last press down. Pressure, I'm going to go from minus two because it's the bold tip. Draw speed one is absolutely fine. If you want to send it around twice, you can do. Now, because it's got Carl's holder on it, it's going to come up with a little error message. Just go OK and start again. Hi, Mum. Yeah. It's absolutely sweltering, <laughs> but it doesn't help. I have to have the door closed when I'm streaming. <laughs> so as soon as I finish, I can open the door back up and it'll go a little bit cooler. Now, when you get the um, let me get it right way around. When you get the foil quill accessory set from Carl, you get a little cable tidy. And you can use that either for keeping your cable off your work, or I use it for my USB extension need, so that keeps it nice and handy for slotting in new USBs. I, I will channel some of my heat towards you then, Tracy. You can channel me some cold back. <laughs> but 
what's the pace it's service like over there at the moment? It's a bit on the slow side. A little bit. So, sometimes it's really good and it gets there the next day and then other days it takes a few to get where it needs to go to. It's become a little bit more um, tricky for us to uh, do it safely too at the moment because what Ian had been doing is he'd been going at like 7 o'clock in the morning and they've decided in their infinite wisdom that um, they won't open until 8 which makes it a bit more tricky in terms of timing so it depends on what Ian's shift's doing Yeah, especially if you're ordering it from Australia, from us, Tracy. <laughs> there we go. So, what I'll do is I'll pop my coil coil out. I won't unplug it just yet because I just want to check to see how good a transfer we've got. So it looks like it's lifted nice and cleanly off our plastic. And therefore, we must have quite a good transfer it onto our card so I'll unplug that. You're going to want to put your quill somewhere to cool down. I tend to hook it over my light which is really naughty of me but it's handy. <laughs> I'm going to gently peel this off and it's one of those ones because it's white on white you're like has it actually transferred or is it just you know a myth. <laughs> Right. I'm going to save my foil in case I need to use it again. Okay, let's pop the camera back up here for a moment. Now, if you were doing this at home, what I would say is leave your foil shield and your mat in your machine because no doubt you have far more room than I do on screen but as I'm a little push for space there we go now this is going to be interesting because white on white trying to get it to show on camera so you can just about see it Posted have been in the UK on Saturday, so the Netherlands on Tuesday, and they got it on the Thursday. That, that is quite. Post is a bit mad, isn't it? It's either everything goes where it should do straight away, or it goes off randomly, and it's very hard to predict. So, I have some watercolours and what I wanted to see is if we do it this way around will we get enough of a resist to actually make that white pop back through. So what I'm going to grab is some kitchen towel, bamboo cloth, a little pot of water And a nice white brush and Ian say hello for me. Hello. It was very weird when I started the stream, it was all doing all sorts of random things. Yeah, it's not started it as the right one, is it? It's doing it as a test one again. Has it? Or it looks like the, the title on the bit I can see or I can see says test, but No, that's no good, is it? No. I'll have to show you later what it did so you can go, mm, that's not right. Yeah. Did you try an auto start to do all? Um, I won't go live thinking, you know, it would just go live. go live and then it didn't and then when I tried to click on it, it vanished before I could 
change names and things. So I'm just using some water. Now if you want to tape this down to a wooden board you can do. Yeah it's still saying test, everybody else is confirming it says test. So. Yeah, it was just having one of those days obviously. Yeah, we'll have to have a look at it later and see what. So what I'm thinking is by doing the water over the top, we're going to be floating that pigment over the, that, so that hopefully it's not going to settle too much onto our foiling. And I'm going to go for... Hi Tracy. A little bit of... Hi Tracy too. Tracy says hi. And hi Lou. Louise as well. Sorry. Lou, Louise. <laughs> and I'm just going to dot this over our background. So I want a kind of triangle formation. And let's get a bit more water. And this time I'm going to go for a different shade of green. And again, I'm just going to dot that on using a nice big brush. So you could be using a large round brush. It's just easier on this one to go. Morning there, morning Linda. Here's a flat one. You having a good morning? <laughs> so I'm just going to drop in a little bit more. If it starts to act like it's a bit dry, just put a bit more water on because you want your colours to move is the idea. So a little bit more of that green. And you want your colours to be darkest down to the bottom left corner. So let's go for it. So you don't want to go too pale because otherwise your your foiling will get lost. <laughs> we don't want that. What foiling? I use the white one. The white one. Yeah, our white. Our white. Our white. Put white on white card again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nothing wrong with a bit of <laughs> white and white. <laughs> Drink on there for you. Thank you. It's cranberry so it might strip your throat a little bit so don't gulp it all once. Okay. Mm. Okay, leave in peace. Bye everybody. Okay. Have fun. So what I'm thinking is on top of that it'd be really nice to add a little bit of sparkle. So I have some pretty amazing spray from Willow Green. If I'm feeling really brave, I might try some of the acrylic. Um, let's go for a tiny bit of the Savage Patina too. So I'm going to roll my spray. So these are stored on the sides anyway. Just a bit of rolling does the trick. Now, just because I don't want to go spraying everything, I'm just going to do a few little splats. So remember, my card is still pretty damp at this point, so it should spread out a little bit. Give it another roll. So with the pretty amazing spray you've got a nice bit of shimmer in there too. So hopefully some of that will come through. Do the same with a little bit of this one. So this is the new colour. So it's got a good bit teal in there. No sparkles in this one though. Okay. So 
there's our background. Now, who would like me to carry on and do a bit more? You can say if you've had enough of me. <laughs> so, I have another couple of bars that I'm going to add to this, but they're going to be using pretty similar techniques. So, if you'd like me to show you that on stream, I can do that. Okay. So if I do the watercolour and foiling bit today, then I will show putting it together tomorrow. So, just because, I'm just going to cover up my water. I still might add some more of the uh, acrylic yet, but like I said, I know that won't resist. So going to be full on when it goes. <laughs> Let's just give my brush a quick clean. So I will give it a proper wash out after. But I just don't want it sitting in the bristles too long. So now I need to wash it in a minute. So the paint pans that I was using was Ink Tense number one rather than number two today. So I'm going to change USB and reset the scanning cup. And this time I'm going to go for, oh, that was a good guess, <laughs> the Heidi Swap one. So, let me just grab my piece of paper, which I decided to do an episode. <laughs> I'm going to icons, flowers, plants, and flower too for this one. Retrieve data, USB, SVG, icons, flowers and plants, and flower too. I'm going to get OK. Now again, let's is actually group this one, so I'm going to move that in towards the middle. I'm going to go and resize that because I want it a little bit bigger. So I may actually be cropping into this one. Now at the moment it's kind of looking in this direction, but we actually want it to look in that direction. So if we go OK, we can flip. That's going to reverse it so it's looking in that direction. And I can go OK. Bring my mat back in. And my spare piece of all media. So I have to say this is becoming rapidly one of my favourite cardstocks to use because you can use it with your dyes and your sprays and you create some really fantastic 3D style embellishments. They almost go like resin with some of the sprays. Pop that piece across there. Like so. because it's still attached to the foil, I may as well use the foil. Across the top. So 
so we know our card is more or less in the same place so sizing it should be relatively easy just going to try and get a bit of that surface tension back into our foil so I'm going to move that there Yeah, brush areas are, are, are fantastic. So, um, or things like the um, explosion powders do the same thing from Pretty Gets Gritty. So you have like a mix of colours in one little bottle and you have no clue what you're going to get. So if you really like having a sort of randomness in your work, which is what I like about the jelly plate, for instance, then you'll, you'll really love having pigment powders like that where you've got a mix of them. If you have the ink tent blocks and um, they do a, a greater for it and you can use those in a similar way. So grate two or three into a little container and then sprinkle it over wet watercolour card and just let them just bleed out. <laughs> so. Come on Mr Matt. No, he's not having it today are you? Come on. Come on. There we go. So I'm just going to start my foil quill preheating while I'm sorting out my foil. while I do this next bit. So in terms of where my card is, I'm going to be working up towards the top left here, so that we're using that bit of foil that hasn't really been used yet. It doesn't matter if there's occasional lip bits as it goes through these points. Show you on here. So we know our card lines up on this one inch line here. So we can take that right up into that corner. And we're going to fussy cut around the outside anyway, so I'm not that worried about having a particular amount extra around the edge for this one. So I'll go OK, OK, and again I'm going to set it to draw. Same settings as last time, has that worked well? Have you tried grating coloured pencils? As in watercolour pencils. Um, yeah, it's exactly the same thing. Um, the blocks make it a little bit easier because you have um, more of a, a surface area that you can actually grate with. And it's a bit safer on your fingers, I think, too. Um... What do you think would happen if you use alcohol ink as the background over the foil? I think you will find that the alcohol will actually colour the foil. I don't think you'd get as much contrast. Now if that's something that you wanted to go for, that might be spot on for what you need. Um, but what I would say is if you're going to do that, instead of playing with the white one, maybe play with the silver. So you get like the pop of reflection underneath instead. Okay, how's we doing? Yep, that's feeling quite warm. So two lines to the back again. In we go. Down with the lever. And off we pop. And I'll move that because nobody wants to see it kind of going down. But don't forget, you can always work the other way around as well. So if you've, you've, if you've got an uh, alcohol ink or watercolour background, you can still fall over the top of that and it'll be absolutely fine. 
Yes, the foil is for sale on our Buy Me A Coffee page. So the white is included in both the jewel and metallic pack. So it is one of one of our favourites because you can do so much with it. Same with the foil shield, you can get that on our Buy Me A Coffee. Hi Tracy, Christina. That's okay, even if you can't join in live, you can always catch up. So all the Facebook videos are available to watch back on our Planner Craft page if not on Planner Craft and Go Create. On YouTube, everything is on our YouTube channel which is Planner Craft. So you can go back and watch loads on there. There's now, I believe, about over 700 videos. I've lost count, I'll have to be honest. <laughs> Twitch stays up for about a week, I think. But if ever you, you are in search of some background noise while you're crafting, then Twitch can be a good way to go. Um, so quite often you'll find a crafter doing something on there, whether that's knitting, crochet, um, it could be 3D printing, um, there's a few laser printers, well cutters, there's ooh, all sorts, lots of digital artists, so if you want to get into spending a bit of time with your Procreate, then Twitch can be a good resource for that too. Okay, so again, it looks like we've got a good lift, so I'm just going to take out my adapter. Let's peel and check first. Yep, that you can actually see it more on this one than what you could on the last one. There we go. So let's unplug my foil quilt. So it's quite important to do that step so it starts to cool down. Well, let's take this off on that. So you can see it's really good good outline on that and you can see even in the bits where it's crossed over you just have like a little gap it's not really obvious that you've gone over something else unload the map now what i would say is whenever you're working with usbs make sure that you're going home and reset and then remove the usb don't leave it attached to your machine. Okay. So I'm going to bring my water back in and I'm going to be going for peachy tones today, I think. Peachy pinky. Oh, up a little bit. Go on. Oh. Excuse the shaking. There are lots of cosplayers on uh, Twitch. Which, yeah. Involves a lot and lot of different skills. So, I'm just going to give my brush a, a proper clean just because I want to go over with some more water. And the large flat brush is the way to go. So the size I'm using is a number 12. I'm just going to go all the way across my image. And let's 
go for intense again. So I'm still going to be using the number one palette. I'm going to be using a colour called Mango, which is like a light orange, and plenty of water. So I'm just going to dot this in to start with. So until you can really see your design, don't get too hung up on starting to try and create any shading. So this first layer is all about making your, your outline pop so you can see where you're going. I'm going to add a little touch of the red. Back to the mango. So hopefully you can start to see the outline kind of appearing. So I'm going to move to a slightly smaller brush. I'm going to go to a round and I'm going to go from number six. I'm going to pick up a bit more of that mango. And I can actually just dot that in towards the centre of our flower. Maybe even add a little touch of that red. A little bit extra water. The wetter the better. So that we're starting to actually get a bit of blending going on. And same up there. A bit more of that mango colour. And I'm just trying to pop out some of the petal shapes so that we start to see a bit of form. So it's not about doing a perfectly rendered flower. It's just slowly, slowly. If you go too much with colour, that's okay. We can just get some water in. Blend it out like so. I'm going to pop in a bit more red over here as well. So it's starting to make this bit pop out. And down here too. Let's get a bit more mango. And I'm popping that around the base of this petal here. back into the red. Now remember you only need tiny little bits of the red. I'm going to put this on the other side of that foiled line. Okay. I'm just going to go back into my mango. I'm just blend that out a little bit. So a bit more water. Just a little bit of red just in that bottom section there. So you want to think about where your shading is going to be the darkest, where it's going to be its lightest. I'm just going to go back in with a little water and just blend out where we've put in our darker shading. So water is your friend because it's going to help you make that outline come back a little bit. Now just be aware when you're working with ink tenses rather than traditional watercolour it will actually stain your foil a little bit. So you don't want to let it sit on there too long. There we go. There's a little bit more there. drop 
a little bit more pigment just in there and just in there and there and there's a little bit in here Also, don't be afraid to turn your work rather than forcing your wrist into odd positions. So, I'm just picking up a little bit of red, so I'm just going to soften that down slightly before I go to my work. Put that in there. And a little bit in here just to that colour through. And there we go. We have a lovely, soft looking penny. Is it penny? I think. So, what I would say is just bear in mind that obviously, as it stands at the moment, your scan and cut isn't going to be able to just cut this out for you. So, you have a couple of options. You could send the file that you've already foiled to canvas and just do a little bit of an offset just so that you're going around that foil. The other one is you can do like I'm doing just at the moment and just darkening around the outside edge so that the machine stands a chance of seeing where it's going. Or you can just do good old fussy cutting. Just doing this is going to help you anyway. So, a little bit more pigment. So. That's a petal I missed there. So, let's just get a little bit more of that red, a bit more water. So hopefully then you can see around the outside. Now what I would say is before you ever cut um, watercolour paper, make sure you let it dry. Which is one of the reasons why I'm going to probably stop there for today. Let everything dry and then we'll do assembly tomorrow. So take care for now. If you have any questions, I will be about on the group um, for the next sort of Oh, half an hour or so. And then I'll see you tomorrow at 11. Same time, same place. And hopefully with proper titles. <laughs> TV troubles, eh? <laughs> Take care and bye.